are these people? Kareem, and I think most people know Kareem from Bet Beat Media. Uh, you've probably seen him with yeah. Nick Nick over at RBN. Nick Nick has had him on several times. He writes a, a Substack, and he also was working on do, getting back to doing live streaming and interviews. And um, and he wrote this up this week, and it's it's not exactly the happiest article ever. It talked about the the pagers and beep beep and what what happened there. And beep beep, Jesus. Well. That's well. That's that's what all the fucking Zion. The, that, that's how yeah. they've been laughing about it. And uh, he says we are sleepwalking into dystopia. And he, of course, uses the the Martin Niemöller famous quote about first they came for the socialists, and I didn't speak out because yeah. I wasn't a socialist, right? And there was no one left to speak for me. He says, for decades, the Israeli regime has waged a campaign of terror across West Asia, undeterred by international law or human rights. Its latest atrocity, a massive terrorist attack on thousands of innocent Lebanese civilians using explosives planted in pagers, underscores just how brazen and dangerous this rogue state is to our world. On Tuesday... Thousands of remotely detonated explosives distributed in pagers ripped through crowded Lebanese neighborhoods, injuring over 3,000 people and killing nine, I think that's up to 12 now, among them a 10-year-old girl. As journalist Rania Kalik outlined, these were indiscriminate attacks on civilian areas like grocery stores and hospitals, clear acts of terrorism. Israel deliberately rigged the devices to ring before detonating, ensuring maximum harm to whoever answered the call. He says this behavior, yep. this behavior is unsurprising from a regime responsible for the ongoing genocide in occupied Palestine, where most likely 10% of the Palestinian population has been exterminated, injured, or kidnapped since October 2023 alone. Yet, the West has been sheepishly silent, with the U.S. State Department outrageously suggesting that the murdered victims are legitimate targets. Western corporate is, media. Yeah. Fucking what? Lincoln. Like. All of them. Uh, like, how how can you even just, like, I still don't understand. I, you know, I've been looking at this story for, like, a week now, Right. There's no way you could target that. Zero ways that that is targeted. Like you are handing out a good that can be sent to anyone. Oh no, they're they're particularly talking, they're talking about the bombs that, like, that are being dropped on Pal, on the Palestinian people being legitimate targets. No, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. They're, I'm talking about the pagers. No, no, that, he's like so, he he. There is still talking about. Not even that legitimate yeah. of oh, the murdered victims of Palestine are legitimate targets. All right, they're all Hamas. Western corporate media also yeah. celebrated an act of terror, the act of terror, as an attack on Hezbollah pagers. Mm -hmm. As human rights lawyer Craig Mockber explains, he was the UN famously the UN employee that resigned in disgrace after October seventh. Yeah, Israel's kill global killing spree constitutes grave breaches of international humanitarian law on multiple fronts. Targeting populated civilian areas is an indiscriminate attack prohibited by the Geneva Conventions. Using civilian devices like pagers as booby traps is also banned to prevent risk to non-combatants. Moreover, is, right, happened. Moreover, the act of terror wounded Iran's ambassador to Lebanon, an internationally protected diplomatic official, which we know how Israel diplomatic doesn't care. Diplomatic immunity. Diplomatic immunity. That, that dates anyone, what Lethal Weapon 2 re reference there. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I hate to make any light of this, but we have to because it's just awful shit. Yeah, I, I would just go insane if I couldn't, so... My apologies. Mockber is right. I'll be to, the immature one. Right. So here's our descent you know. into utter lawlessness because Mockber is right to conclude that the Israeli regime, enabled by its Western backers, operates with complete impunity. 
we are watching the rapid descent of our world into utter lawlessness. In just 11 months, Israel has obliterated the international order through its unrestrained violence from Gaza's genocide to assassinating Iranian and Syrian officials to bombing Yemen, Lebanon, and Syria. It commits these atrocities secure in the knowledge that pliable institutions like the UN Security Council and International Criminal Court are paralyzed by American vetoes and intimidation campaigns. Yeah, I mean, they're strongly worded letters at this point. So, the, Israeli trail, the Israeli trail of unchecked depravity has effectively given a green light to other state and non-state actors to employ similar terror tactics worldwide. If genocide, rape, torture, assassinations, and pager bombings are now acceptable for Israel, they become acceptable for anyone. Yep. So now our mafia empire, it doesn't end there. Israel's destructive influence extends far into domestic Western politics through its army of lobbyists and insidious operatives like Jeffrey Epstein who notoriously weaponized sexual blackmail against prominent figures in the West, many of whom displayed a disturbing... Go check out... Go ahead. Go check out Friends, Friends of Diddy on, on the channel, and Oof. feel free to look into more of those connections between Israel and... I mean, I, sex trafficking, blackmail, I mean... Ashley you know. Kutcher... Epstein. Yep. Yep. All of it is yep. like the, the music industry, yep. Clive Davis, allegedly. Mm hmm. Um, additionally, keep it secret. Keep it safe. Right. Uh, additionally, emboldened by their benefactors' impunity, Zionist street thugs have also taken to violently assaulting peaceful protesters denouncing the ongoing genocide in Gaza. Both on the streets of the United States, I saw the cops assaulting a 10-year-old boy waving a Palestinian flag today. Um, this is, of course, also happening on college campuses where there is a massive effort to shut down protests against genocide and against the endowments funding Israeli uh, weapons manufacturers that sell to Israel, perpetrating the genocide. Yep. Kareem mm -hmm. continues, the media propaganda machine, and this is the reason why I wanted to bring this, is this paragraph right here. This is what I live for right here. The media propaganda machine is arguably the most insidious element, perpetually dehumanizing Palestinians and Arabs while whitewashing Israeli criminality. I'm going to read that again because that to me is the, that's it. That's everything right there. The media propaganda machine is arguably the most insidious element, perpetually dehumanizing Palestinians and Arabs while whitewashing Israeli criminality. Major Western outlets provide a platform for Israeli officials to spew hateful rhetoric uninterrupted, like talk TV. Stop going on talk TV. Yep. Yet Palestinians. Yet Palestinian officials face constant disdain and mockery. Do you denounce Hamas? Do you denounce Hamas? Do you demand that the, that the hostages be returned? Ask Bibi, does he demand that the hostages be returned? Israeli killings are discussed passively, as if Palestinians randomly perish, while Israeli casualties are portrayed as being murdered or slaughtered by Hamas. Alan McLeod has been all over this. Just look at his Instagram timeline and he does the fix. He has to do a fixed it for you just about every day to something in one of the corporate media things that's yep. whitewashing this. After mm -hmm. Lebanese children were bombed, there was no solemn condemnations from the media. In fact, anyone questioning Israel's actions faces barrages of anti-Semitism smears. See Mary Kostakidis over in Australia right now. Bless you. Ruling classes prefer lack of consequences for Israel's atrocities. Yes, they certainly do, Kareem. In allowing yep. this in allowing this uninterrupted path of destruction to continue, 
the world is abandoning the minimal ethical foundations required for a functioning and just society. Israel's campaign of land theft, displacement, siege and slaughter against Palestinians and anyone it deems an enemy is permanently destroying any notion of sanctity of human life, territorial sovereignty, or self-determination. Big words. The global yep. response has been toothless, with major powers like China and Russia standing idly by. Despite the international court ruling that all states must sever ties that aid and enable the occupation, most nations continue arming, funding, diplomatically shielding, and trading with Israel as it commits more brazen atrocities. Snap out of it! Shout out to Spain for actually doing the thing. Somewhat to Erdogan in Turkey. He's playing both sides. But yeah. he's at least spoken on behalf of the Palestinian people. I don't think that Putin is any advocate for the Palestinian people. I think that he'll get in line with Bibi. He always has. Kareem says, be under no illusion. The ruling classes worldwide may prefer the lack of consequences for Israel's atrocities because it's a prime opportunity to wield authoritarian control over their own populations with impunity in the future, including Putin. Now that Israel has demonstrated the ability to commit such acts without facing significant repercussions, why would they risk curtailing the very actions they may one day wish to emulate in order to tighten their grip on power? And a lot of people might be upset with me for I mean, saying Putin, but he hasn't done any. Look, I get that his hands are tied up with another war, but he could certainly open his mouth and say something. And he doesn't I just, criticize I feel like Bibi. If, if Spain, if, well, he has criticized, I mean, he has, first of all, like pretty recently, multiple times. But I mean, I feel like if Spain wants to do anything that they have a history of a particular thing that might help nobody expects the spanish inquisition you know i uh, i hear that and i think like, mel brooks the inquisition will you begin. will you convite the inquisition <laughs> look out sin all right the dark ages he says and this is this is the doomerism in kareem but i i'm kind of where he is and you know, and so, several of us are, but that doesn't mean we're going to stop fighting. We are heading towards a dark age where the powerful trample legal and moral boundaries with impunity. I think we're already there. A dystopian reality takes shape where torture, rape, genocide, and terrorism are no longer extreme abuses, but accepted tactics openly employed to subjugate dissent in our very own communities. Because whatever happens overseas, you know, gets brought back and happens domestically. Brute force dictates the new rules of conflict. Morality be damned. No society will be spared this descent into sanctioned depravity unless we shatter the malicious group of those who might who believe that might makes right. Israel's unrelenting terrorism against its neighbors, its decades-old genocidal project in Gaza, its attacks on Iranian and Syrian officials. It's chokehold on our political class, it's media stranglehold, it's blackmail projects, it's vast network of torture and rape facilities that they're proud of and brag about. It's weapons industries, it's spy programs, and an endless stream of more depravities, including running the porn industry. These are all opening salvos ushering us into a bleak reality. They insid insidiously tear down the edifice of human rights and humanitarian laws so painstakingly built after the unimaginable horrors of World War II. Oh, where did we go? World War II? <laughs> you scrolled. I've done that before. It is crucial you know. that we heed the words, prophetic words, that Nelson Mandela uttered almost three decades ago. Quote, we know, we know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. Um, Morgan Freeman. No, that was Mandela, not Morgan what? Freeman. Today shows Mandela? how 
today shows how truthful and prophetic his words were. As we fail to fight for Palestine's freedom, their fate of subjugation and ethnic cleansing at the hands of the depraved Israeli regime is now becoming ours. This was a good piece yep. by Kareem, man. Um, I, I got to invite him on the show at one point. I, would, I think I'd like to sit down and have a conversation with him. He's a good dude. Oh, you know what? Before... And now for something completely different. Support independent media. We need it more than ever. Support the Indie Media Awards and support independent art with Sago Brothers. Thank you to Sean the Accord Lord who did just that earlier today. Um, and others who have also done the same. Golden Monarch says Putin and the, and the digital ruble, which is nothing Palestine, let alone Russia, needs, let alone cryptocurrency. I agree with you on that one. Um Dr. Nick says that he thinks that the pager bombings have turned the tide within the diplomatic community regarding Israel. And you may be right there because I saw the Japan. Diplomatic community. Well, I saw Japan making a big denouncement. Motorola suing Israel Japan. now. Um, yeah, there's been a couple of uh, stuff with that. that other co Partially because of the ICJ stuff, what's been happening is it's now opening up African countries to start suing uh, uh, countries that want to be involved with them monetarily through that, right? So you're seeing that with Germany. You're seeing that they're supposedly going to sue us. Um, I I don't know to what d effect that will actually have, but uh, we'll see. You know, um, I just feel like it's uh, we need that change a little bit quicker. You know what I mean? Um, if you are of the means and you can hook up INN, we really appreciate it. There's a couple ways to do it. Cash app, dollar sign, Indie News Network. Co-fee.com slash Indie yeah. News Network. PayPal.me slash yeah. Indie News Network. I got a nice contribution this yeah. morning. Support. And Rumble. We get the Rumble rants also. Rumble.com slash C slash Indie News Network. Bunch of ways to support us. Substack, innnewsletter.com is another way to do that. We've been publishing a daily newsletter. Coming to a Substack newsletter near you. She hasn't set one up yet this week, but they, they have been pushing corporate media hard. Uh, Golden Monarch says, get mm. INN to Savvy Sabs, Jimmy Dore, and do dissonance numbers. That would be wonderful. We would love to see that. Make it happen. Sure. Do the doo-doo. Um, do the doo-doo. Uh, Dr. Nick, let's push INN to number you one. You can do it, baby. Number one on Kick right now. We need five viewers. We have three live. If we can get three more over to Kick watching live, we will be number one in the news category on Kick watching live at the yeah. moment. There's Let's make INN number one over there. Yeah, hook it up. 